Well, g'day and welcome back to the shed. Can't believe this is part five of this Bush VHF 64. It really is going on a bit, but uh, we had a win last time. I replaced the uh, piano key switch mechanism and it actually worked, which was a bit of luck, I think, really. Uh, the only issue was that the FM is not as loud as the AM, and I'm not sure why that is, but uh, we'll investigate that now and see what I can find out what's going on. Uh, the only thing I've done in the meantime is I've just uh, repainted and cleaned up this front panel and refitted it. And the reason for that is it's uh, just too difficult to deal with, with the magic eye tube dangling around, the pot contact shorting against things and the dial lamps potentially shorting on things. So um, that tidies it all up and makes it a lot easier to work on. Anyway, I'll just finish screwing this back on and then we'll turn it upside down and do a bit of fault finding, see what's going on with this FM. To check out the full records. Well, the FM reception as such sounds quite clean, it doesn't sound distorted or anything. But one thing I did notice, apart from the low volume, is that the stronger stations seem to appear twice close together, which maybe suggests some misalignment, maybe in the IF. I'm just guessing here. But uh, have a look at this. So there's the station the first time. In just a second, we'll have the pleasure of premiering a new track and from a new band. A little email from Love Shovel. And there it is again. At reduced volume, but that's the same station. Ecosystem, Last Quokka, The Galaxy, Pop Please, and Pond, and have an album on the way along with... So maybe it is an alignment problem. I really don't know. So looking at the schematic, and uh, fortunately I've got a full circuit description here too. So it says here diode sections of um, diode sections A and B of V5 operate as a ratio detector circuit. So um, audio output is developed across C56 and passed via a de-emphasis circuit. C57, R22, C61, switch 6C, R28, SZ to the volume control. Okay, so looking at the schematic, here it is, the two diodes facing opposite directions. Uh, in parallel, here's um, the main discriminator cap, that's a 50 UF, I've replaced that. Uh, C62 is a 0.05, and I'm pretty sure I replaced that as well. Um, R27, R27 is, uh, R27 is 22. 2k and I'll check but I'm pretty damn sure that I checked that and it was um, with intolerance. All right well let's let's have it upside down and see if I can identify these components and see if I can see what's happening with it. Okay first of all I'll check that R27 which is across the um, the uh, discriminator cap and that's it there it's mounted on the switch red red orange 22k and it actually measures I'm pretty sure I checked this when I put it in the switch 25.8k. Um, I don't think that's far enough out to have any effect, or certainly not the effect that we're seeing. So uh, I'll leave that as it, as it is. And just looking at it here, this here is the actual discriminator cap, 50 UF, um, positive to ground there. And this little one down in here, I don't know if you can even see that, it's on a tag strip. What's going on with those chooks? Anyway, that's the one, that's that C56 that the audio output is developed across. This side goes to ground along with the positive side of the discriminator cap. This side goes um, up to the switch where it's uh, switched across. There's S7, that's the other cap across the discriminator cap circuit. Um, as I said before, there's the, uh, the resistor also across that. So that's been changed. This we don't know, and I don't know anything about this type of cap. Just have a closer look at it. And there he is there with a wire in front of it. Um, I have no idea if the, this type of cap is reliable or not. I suppose one option would be to just snip it and replace it with, a, I think it's a .001, I'll have one of them lying around and see if it makes any difference. Okay, so here is the old um, C56 snipped out of the circuit and I've replaced it here with one of Carl's um, amber caps. So I guess the first thing to do is to see if the radio still works or if I've broken it. Mm -hmm. 
Your know, FM is working pretty much the same as it was before. I think there may be a slight increase in volume, but it is hard to tell. Um, the volume is an adequate listening level, it's just that it's a lower level than the AM, which is annoying. Anyway, I think we've eliminated that as a possibility. So I guess the next thing I'm going to be looking at is um, alignment. Um, I don't have a replacement for that ECC85, nor do I have a valve tester. So the only way I could um, check whether that was low on emission or not would be to buy another one. Um, or perhaps take it to a friend who has a valve tester who can check it for me. So I think the next thing I'm going to have to do is have a look at the FM alignment procedure if I can find it and uh, do my best to follow it. So that'll be the next bit. We'll see how we go with that. Well that all sounds clean enough. Anyway, I guess the next thing to do is to um, do the uh, FM alignment, but I, I found the alignment procedure and the first line of it says do the AM alignment first. So, oh well, I guess I was going to do it anyway, so uh, turn it around, I'll try turning it upside down, set up the signal generator and uh, see what I can do. Actually reading through the um, alignment instructions, it says to connect the signal generator to pin 2 of um, V4, which is the the third IF, first, second, yeah. Um, so it seems to want you to do it in stages, um, connecting to each IF valve in turn and aligning it uh, that way. So I guess I'll do as it says. Um, hope this lead will be all right. I've got it set to fairly low output. So I'll turn it upside down and hook this up and just, uh, I suppose I better arrange a meter on the uh, on the speaker as well. Maybe I can rig up a dummy load that would be useful. Okay, now it says to set set it to 300 meters on medium wave. So that's medium wave. Um, it says to align the dial pointer. Now, I don't have the dial string done uh, and I want to do this before I mess with the dial string I suppose, although I'll need it for um, RF alignment at some point. But um, looking at the uh, old broken dial and I'm keeping the, the new one until I've finished because I don't want to mess up. So medium wave 250, 350, so 300 meters is about a third of the way towards the high frequency end. So about the middle and then a little bit more towards the high frequency end. See if I, that's about the middle now a little bit more towards the high frequency end, that's about it there. I hope that doesn't need to be a dead accurate setting, I don't suppose it would. We're not doing a, an RF alignment here, it's uh, the IF alignment. Alright, switching it on and we will see if we get um, any signal through. That globe's a bit dodgy. No, we've got some stray radio reception happening there. I'll just turn it off that station. There, that'll... Just tune it off station. Now, what's happening with my signal generator here? Oh, modulation, let's see. Okay. AM frequency 100 Hertz. I'll make that 400 Hertz. There we go. Okay, put a dummy load across that for peace and quiet and I'm hoping that you can see the meter uh, as well as my adjustment because I don't have a, uh, a second camera available at the moment very stiff. No, that core's not moving enough. I'm going to have to do something about these um, uh, coil cores. See if I can get them freed up before I go any further with this. Just trying to free, free up the slug in this IF can here. I managed to get the bottom one free just by scraping around the, the white paint that they've put on it. Um, 
this one's a little bit more stubborn. I'm going to try some isopropyl on a cotton bud and just press it in there and let it soak for a minute. Okay, let's see how that's gone. Yes, that's moving. All right, well, that kind of worked. I'll try it on the others because I'm going to have to budge them as well. Okay, well, I've got that set up and I'm putting 20 millivolts into it. That's giving me a pretty good signal there. Um, I went down to 10 millivolts, but it um, didn't get much of a reading on the meter, so that's as low as I probably need to go. So I also have a, um, a primitive dummy load set up here. So what I can do is remove the uh, speaker leads from it. And uh, that's this one here. <laughs> As you said, there we go. And turn it up to some kind of reference point. There we go there. I hope you can see the meter. This way I can do it with only one camera and I don't have my other um, phone available that I normally use for this sort of thing. So this core is free, or it was. Yeah, I think that's it. So let's just try. Yep, that's coming up a little bit as I unwind it anti-clockwise. It is quite stiff, I've got to say. I'll try a bit more anti-clockwise. That's going back down again now. That's peaked. And that's going down. So that's the peak right there. There's very little in that. Now I'll, uh, I'll try from the back. So looking at that IF there. This one here, yep, just turning it anti-clockwise and it's coming up, creeping up, creeping up. And more. That's it, now it's going down again, so the peak was there. All right, that's easy enough. I'll just repeat that with the other three. There's no point in showing you all of them. And then uh, I'll grit my teeth and see what I can do with the FM. I've been reading the um, instructions for FM IF alignment and it says switch receiver to FM. Okay, I can do that. Connect two 47K resistors in series between point A and the chassis. And point A ends up being the uh, negative end of that 5UF cap across the two diodes. So here it is here, point A it says, just across there. That's the cap there with the positive 2 chassis. So there we are, I've soldered two 47K resistors in series between point A and that's where the, here's the uh, that capacitor here just behind this cord and ground there. So that should be okay as far as that goes. Now the next part of the instruction says to I'll apply a signal to pin 2 of V2 which I haven't done yet because I tried to move the uh, the core of this. This is L25 is the top adjustment on this can here and I cannot move that slug. It is stuck. I've tried putting all sorts of things in it. I even tried running a drop of paint stripper down it to see if I could melt that white paint. It is well and truly stuck in the core. Yes. Now the other option I have is that Warren sent me from the UK along with the switch mechanism um, another uh, one of these IF cans and strangely enough even though the can is bigger it still has a normal size IF transformer in the middle and these cores are beautiful they move easily. So I've given up trying to free the cores in this one if I go any further I will break them. Uh, I've tried a steel screwdriver I can't move the bloody things, so I'm going to swap it over. It's uh, all a matter of fishing down through a, a nest of components in here. There we go, there's the nut. So now this can should come off. There we go. There it is there. 
and I just want to confirm that it's visually identical to the uh, the one I got from Warren it does look the same I think it's the same transformer um, but without the stuck windings so I'll go ahead and change that uh, left-handed with the iron oh well I'm also trying not to burn anything else as I go um, there we go that one's off and again it's left a little loop in the wire I'll just sucker that out yeah all right I'll keep going on this eventually we'll get there and uh, I'll change it for the other one and hopefully I'll be able to adjust it all right so I've got all the leads off now it was a bit of an exercise and just taking out these two screws and the transformer should now just come out there we go just collect that screw and there it is okay well I've cleaned the pins up as best I can with solder wick um, while holding them with pliers to make sure that I don't uh, overheat anything in there I've checked it for continuity that's probably the best I can do so now it's just a matter of fitting it back in um, making sure that pin 2 is on the right there comes up through there and feeding a screw down <laughs> through the components into the screw hole this screwdriver is a bit magnetic so that helps once we've got one in it'll stay in place so that's good yes we have one in okay so getting the wires back on and I'm using these I believe they're artery forceps um, just to act as a heat sink on the pins so that I don't um, cook anything while I'm trying to solder the, the leads back on so if I get that back onto the bottom of the pin, lock it and then I can push the lead over and solder it hopefully without damage to the transformer so I'll keep on doing that one at a time until I've got them back on and then we will see if the radio still works okay so that's got it uh, soldered back in now I've disconnected those um, 47k resistors from point A because I want to just see if the radio still works I've disconnected the dummy load from uh, the output because I don't think I'll be using that with the FM alignment um, it seems to be looking at other things so plug it in on dim bulb um, turn it on and it's currently set to AM so I put a, an aerial on there and just um, make sure everything's working on AM first and then I'll see if we get any FM reception having changed this coil chances are we will have lost FM reception I don't really know okay so we have noise let's see if we have a station here somewhere and just for stories that they've passed out Adam Jr. and Senior all those years ago. He is a premiership captain. Okay, so that's AM. I'll put the aerial on FM. That's on FM. Bit of volume. Not hearing anything. Oh, we have something there. It's only very faint. Yeah, it's rather weak and distorted. But having uh, changed the transformer, I didn't expect to get um, full reception. All right. 
I'll turn it off and uh, then back to the uh, instructions and see what I need to do. Switch the receiver to FM. Done that. Connect the two 47k um, resistors in series between point A and the chassis. Done that. Connect the Model 8 AVO on the 10 volt DC range. Now here we run into a problem because I left my Model 8 AVO meter in the boot of my Rolls Royce parked at Elon Musk's place and I can't get it back until he calls, gives me a call. So I'll have to do, I don't have a valve voltmeter either, um, so my old um, digital multimeter will have to do it, hopefully high enough impedance. Connect the output of a signal generator and then we go up to here between the control grid pin 2 of V2 and the chassis. I've done that. Turn the volume control to minimum. OK, volume is at minimum. And feed a 10.7 MHz unmodulated signal. I've got the, um, the signal generator set to 10.7 MHz with no modulation. During the following adjustments, adjust the output of the signal generator to main a four, maintain a 4 volt reading on the meter. OK, set the core of L25 three quarters of an inch inside the former and adjust the core for maximum DC on the meter. Correct peak is the second one from the adjusting end of the former. All right. Then we adjust L21 with our 10K resistor across L22. That's going to be a pain. Then we put the resistor on L22 and adjust L21. I'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Let's just get this done first. OK, so in lieu of my uh, AVO 8 meter, I've got my old um, JCAR uh, meter set up here uh, onto point A <laughs> uh, where it says to. I've got 10.7 um, megahertz being fed into the uh, grid of the first IF valve. And I've started at uh, 5 millivolts, and I'm getting about 3 volts on, across the output there. So um, it says to keep that at uh, 4 volts, so I'll just turn this up to 9, 8 millivolts, gives me about 4 volts there. So let's see what I can do uh, by way of adjusting it. And Gee, I can't really see the slug in there very well. Having it on its side isn't ideal. Let's see if I can feel it. And that's going down. So if I bring it up, it says the second peak, so I'll take it down further and see if it comes back up again. No, it doesn't seem, no, it's slowly coming back up. No. No, we'll undo that. Bring it back up. And there's four going up. Okay, so we'll adjust that back down. Seven millivolts, six, four millivolts is giving me four volts. Bring it back out. It's going down again now. That's its peak right there. <coughs> Wish that rooster had shut up. Well, it looks like that's that's about as good as it gets. Okay, so next it says to adjust the core of L21 and then L22. Uh, L22 is on top, so I'm going to actually do it first. Um, and it's not easy to move, but doing that, that's going down, back up. Gee, there's nothing in that. It's going down again, back up. That That's peaked where it is. I'm getting nothing out of that. Now L21 is underneath. Um, I can't seem to budge it, so I'm just going to turn the set upside down 
and see if I can um, free up the core. Yeah, sorry for the handheld video. I thought I'd try and video this. Here we go. I put paint stripper in here and left it for half an hour and that allows me to try and pick the paint out of here. So that's what I've been doing. It worked with the top one, so I've got a lump of paint there. I succeeded with this one and managed to get the core to move. So I'll just keep going and uh, see what I can do. Okay, we're plugged in, turning on, and I'll just wait for um, the voltage to come back up. Yep, here we go. Meter is rising to just over 4 volts. Okay, so we had to adjust the core of this one here. Um, and I've got it to move, so we'll see how we go. And turning that, it's going down. It's coming up. <laughs> going down again. Gee, it was peaked right where it was. 4.2 uh, volts. I'll just take that down to 3 volts RMS. While I've got it upside down I may as well <laughs> peak the underside of this one too. I know it's out of sequence but They've all been so close that I'm kind of thinking I'm wasting the time. I might have to gently use the metal screwdriver on this. That is turning it. It's going back down back up. Only a, only a fraction of a volt there. Difference. I'll just do it with this in case a screwdriver was interfering with it. That's its peak right there. And I'm look just the minutest movement of the needle. Um, I'll go ahead and do the top of that, but really, I think we're done. Okay, so we're looking at this one here. That's going down, coming back up, going down again. It's peaked right there. I redo the other one. Going down, back up. That's its peak there. Okay. I'll just go through the uh, instructions again and see what we do next. Okay, it just says to um, go back and readjust the core of L25 so I guess I can do that easily enough. I don't think it'll make much difference given that we got very little out of those IF cans. Doing that though. Having a bit of trouble getting it to uh, engage in the slot there. That might be it there. Yeah, it's going down. That's it, up. That's its peak right there. Yeah, we're not going to get any better than that. That's it, right there. The next look, the next bit looks a bit complicated, so uh, I'll read through that and try and make sense of it and come back. Okay, so it says to, com um, to connect um, an amp meter, set a 50 microamp range, which I happen to have here, between the junction of those two resistors and what they call point B, which turns out to be um, 
that uh, C56, I think it is, that the audio output is developed across in the FM stage. That's obviously the long, wrong way around because we've got a negative reading. So I'll just swap the leads. It's easier this way. Whoa, okay. So that's a lot. Um, I possibly need to reduce the output here. That's still a lot. Two volts. That doesn't seem to make much difference. What signal I put into it. All right, read through the instructions again. Connect the 0 to 50 microamp meter between the junction of the two 47K resistors from point A to the chassis and point B, which I've just found out. Adjust the core of L26 um, starting with the core 3, 3 eighths of an inch inside the former for a zero reading on the microamp meter. So we're looking for a zero reading here. Okay, so this is, I'll, I'll just make sure I've got the right one. Adjust the core of L26. L26 is, yes, the bottom of this one. Where are we? There it is, there. And I want a zero reading, so that's going down. I'll put that back on 50 microamps. No, I won't. I want to get it right back down. It's still going down. Don't know if I can get a zero reading out of that. I'm going to turn the chassis upside down so I can just get at it a little bit better. Hopefully without disturbing anything. Now. This is it here. It's still wound in a fair way, so it's not that bad. Undoing it seems to reduce. Okay, I've got the slug halfway out and I'm still not getting out. It's actually coming out the bottom of the transformer and I'm not getting a zero reading yet. Um, it doesn't say whether to have the signal generator connected or not. Um, I presume it's supposed to still be there. There, I don't know. To, I'll just disconnect it. Well, that makes a difference. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. I have no idea. And screw the slug back into the transformer though. Alright, so that's got the signal generator at 2 volts RMS. I have no idea where it's supposed to be set. I'll try and get the minimum reading here. It's coming up. Coming way up. Okay, so if I adjust that out. I'm not going to get to a zero reading. The slug is going to come right out. And I'm still not at zero. So I don't know what I can do about that. Quite a big slug, it's still coming out. This is quite ridiculous. It's not going to go to zero. What I could do, I suppose, is just take this off and see if the radio still works. OK, so turning it on, I'll turn the volume up. 
We've got something there. Got some reception there, but it sounds terrible. Well, that's dreadful. I wonder if adjusting that thing will make any difference. Well that point there seems to give the least distortion. I must have been doing something wrong there before, trying to get a, a zero reading out of it. But that sounds reasonable now. But the volume level I don't think has increased much over what it was before. And look, I just had to do that by year. There's um, not much else I could do with it. I'll have more of a fiddle with it, listen to it carefully. I might hook up a better speaker and see if I can just get it better by ear because nothing else I can do here. So now I'm trying to get ready to build, some, build an engine. So you're basically covered in grease. <laughs> well, it's the next morning and I've um, fired it up and I decided to hook up the original speakers and have a listen to that. And what I did then was tune to a uh, music station <coughs> and carefully adjust the core of that uh, coil for minimum distortion. And I've got to say it's sounding pretty good. We're also getting better volume levels. It's still not exactly the same as AM, but then we have all sorts of aerial issues and there's still a possibility of the ECC85 being a bit weak. But really, we're getting pretty good reception now. FMs, three concerts, three cities in the USA. Now, you, know, you can't tell much with speech, but listening to music, and of course I can't play music on it, it is sounding pretty clean. So, the next thing to do, if I've got to string the dial, I'll have to do something about those piano key buttons, uh, take them off the old switch and transfer them over. And I might just straighten up that row of uh, buttons. It looks awful, so... I'll see if I can do something with that. Another thing to notice too is that the Magic Eye Tube is actually working. Um, it's not overly bright, like some people I know, but it's um, it's certainly working, and you can get a reading off it. So, um, if I come across another Magic Eye Tube, uh, great. But they're expensive things, and I'm not sure if I want to stump up for one for this radio. We'll see how it turns out. So the next thing I guess is the dial string. And I do have the original dial string here, it's just broken. Um, so I can probably work out the length required um, from this. There's a bit still wound around the spindle here, about probably a couple of inches. Um, so I'll add a few inches to compensate for that and just start by cutting a piece um, that long. So yeah, wish me luck, this is going to be interesting. I do have a dial stringing diagram as well, of course, and I've been watching Manuel Caldera's um, restoration of one of these radios, and it's been a mine of information. Now I have a nice packet of dial string here. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's a bit tangled. I'm going to have to untangle all of this before I can do anything. So uh, I'll sit down and do that for a few minutes and then come back. I was wondering what to do with the pointer. It has, after I've cleaned it off, I realise it's lost whatever paint it used to have on it. So I've just slipped a bit of red heat shrink over it. I think that will do the job. It's easier than painting it and waiting for it to dry and mucking around. I started to do the dial string and then I realised I need to sort out these grommets that hold the uh, tuning 
gang and FM tuner in place there. Uh, flopping around like a nudist snob. So I'll uh, have to try and get some grommets that'll fit in there, something that'll just hold it in place tight. Okay, well that's done. This is nice and firm now. I went down to Clark Rubber and got myself some of these little grommets. Worked a treat. The other thing I've done is fitted one of um, Carl's cords to it. I uh, got sick of that um, other cord getting tangled up everywhere. So now, have I been procrastinating? Yeah, probably. But uh, it's time now to string the dial string. So here we go. Here. Attaches to the pointer, goes down here, <coughs> and it says four and a half turns. Now it only had a couple of turns on it, I think, remaining when I got it. I'll try and get four and a half, but I think it's going to be a bit of a stretch. Okay, that's one turn. Now where does it go? Up to here behind this one. onto the drum. Now this will need a couple of turns. What I'll do is I'll mark the point where I want to hook it onto the spring. There. And then I'll just release the tension of it a bit. And that's the best way to do that. Just Pretty firmly stuck in there now, I'll just pull that back on. See how that goes. And the springs are somewhat stretched, about half their travel. So look, I think that's probably going to be okay. Alright, now we have the pointer, which sits on here. I have to grease this, of course. Now, releasing the, the old cord from the pointer, I broke off one of these little bits here, so I might have to see if I can um, repair that somehow. Perhaps by soldering a piece of wire onto here um, that I can loop over and bend down, that might be a solution. I'll give that a go. Okay, I've just soldered a little bit of wire on that that I can then um, bend over as I put the dial cord through. I still haven't got the new glass out, I'm afraid of dropping it or something like that, so um, that'll be just my luck. So I'm gonna put the old one in just in place here. Okay, so I notice the red point and lines up with this row of dots down here. Probably those are the end of travel. And that's as far as it goes, perhaps back a little bit. There, perhaps. Alright, let's see. There we go. stops back there, a little bit behind them. So somewhere between the two would be ideal, I presume. And that's centred. That's centred on the magic guy, so I think that's in the right place. Let's just move this along about that much.
doubt if that'll get me in trouble for copyright. Not quite appropriate because it's not a German radio. Um, but that seems to be going pretty well. Again, I'd like a little bit more volume on FM just to give it parity with the AM. But look, it's... <laughs> It's pretty good. Anyway, happy with that so far. I think we'll still get to the bottom of the um, signal level on FM. Try it on um, medium wave. Of course, I'll have to change the aerial over. Let's try shortwave. A bit early, but you never know what you get. Dalam sidang media mengenai perkembangan separuh sidang Asia Hancur pada hari ini Menurutnya Don't play too much music. Um, I was watching a video by Manuel Caldera when he did one of these radios and on the back panel was a um, an FM aerial and it had a coil on it like this. So I pulled a still out of his video and, uh, and counted the number of turns. There's 22 turns so I made one up. This is a little bit rough but it does and plug this into the FM aerial and it does make a big difference. I'm getting quite good volume, uh, more music, uh, you can't get talking on FM, getting quite good volume on FM now, it seems to be, well it's not quite the same as AM, um, on a stronger station AM is louder, but then I've got the AM hooked up to my long line aerial, which is going to give it a belting in signal, um, I suppose if I reduce the AM aerial to what you typically have inside, like a, you know, three metres of wire or something at the most, I might, uh, I might get some comparable signal. I know the AGC should compensate for that, but you do have signals of various strengths and some FM stations, or a lot of them are fairly weak here. There's a couple that are quite strong. Uh, but um, anyway, this seems to have worked. So I'm going to go with this. I'm going to mount it up on this, this tag strip once I clean it up and put that on the back panel once I make the back panel. I'm going to have to make up a back panel for this and I'm still not too sure how I'm going to go about it. I don't think I'll be able to reproduce a detail um, to match the original panel. I don't think I'll try for that. I'll just um, make something functional. Anyway, the time has come to deal with this cabinet. So I'll just take the chassis off the bench so I can work on it a little bit. Um, I'll just find a spot to store it for the moment and uh, we'll see what we can do with this mess. Okay, well I only put this together loosely so it should be easy enough to get out. Oh, yes, it was easy enough to get out. <laughs> um, okay, so I don't want to lose any of these screws. I'll just try and... No, it doesn't go out either way. I think I had to take the speakers out, that's right. shortening this for sure. That's one. I had one nut on each of them. Okay. And 
and they all attach to this little board here so I'll just take that out plastic frame which sits up in the front which gets in the way of taking this speaker baffle out so with that forward that will now come out you've got quite a collection of dust in there and the plastic bit comes out along with some wooden bits which I will need to fasten back into the cabinet uh, more wooden bits and I'll put these speaker nuts aside back into the box with all the parts this bit of wood can go in there too so I guess the first thing I'll do is just give it a brush out I'll take it outside clean it out and um, so then we'll start looking at gluing it up okay so looking at the inside of the cabinet here and I've just brushed it out with a, an old paintbrush which I find a pretty good way of cleaning things out one day I'll invest in a compressor and I'll be able to use some um, compressed air I notice there's this section of veneer here right along the front of the cabinet which has become detached I'm not quite sure what function that serves but I will glue it all back in place I've got this missing piece here um, just I guess to preserve the integrity of the cabinet I'm sure it was there for a reason um, Radio manufacturers don't use usually waste resources on uh, on unnecessary things. There's also a number of gluing blocks that have come out. I've got them in the box there. I'll glue them back in. Uh, this cr this brass trim will have to come out. It's all tarnished. I'll just put that in vinegar for a while and um, polish it up. And there's some more attached to the plastic piece that goes in the front. I still have the two clips that hold the back panel in, and it apparently. I'm guessing screws in through these holes on the top here so I'll make something up to fit in there that's the best I can do really the main issue that I'm going to have to deal with is this um, this corner here it's been well and truly smashed by good old Australia Post um, not that the person that sold it to me made any effort to package it properly either so this will be the first thing is to to fix this up but looking at the front corner of it, this corner is split right along here. So it's taken quite a, a hard hit on here. And I guess the first thing I need to do is to coax that back together as best as I can and glue that up before I start working on the structure of that uh, broken corner. Well, I'm afraid the cabinet is going to have to wait for the next video. Um, I also have to do an FM RF alignment because I noticed that 96 FM is coming in at around 94.5 on the dial. Um, I suspect the AM is also out but uh, the scale's marked in metres so I'm not used to dealing with that. I'll have to work that out. It's not an Australian radio so you don't have what we typically have here is all the, uh, the station signs marked on the dial. But uh, I'll, uh, I'll work that out and uh, get to it in the next episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you can come back and watch the what's hopefully the final episode of this one. It'll be part six, which I think is some kind of a record. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll catch you then. Bye for now.